uh, but before that I must uh, say that uh, uh, this is the first time we all are sitting at our home locked from outside world and virtually connected and this is the first time that uh, uh, side by side a uh, BTEC uh, first year orientation program is going on. I had been sent the link, but unfortunately I couldn't attend because uh, I hired class with you. So, and class is more important than being present in the orientation program. So I always prefer to take class over orientation, uh, over being attend, present in orientation program. So that's why I have decided not to be present over there. But we are all unhappy because you were supposed to meet with new students uh, today. I was also supposed to meet with new students, new batch of students. I couldn't, we couldn't welcome them properly. But uh, this is fate. This is destiny. What could we, what could we do? So anyways, so let's uh, proceed with uh, my today's class and my today's topic is hypothesis testing. But as you can see that uh, this is the first time I'm sharing something which is not actually familiar with you. Uh, uh, and it's it is not going with my style. Actually, I prepared the note personally and I there used to be a Techno India logo over there then TMSL mathematics over there and today's topic class, etc. Everything is written. But today, uh, this is a page. This is a PDF file which has been select which has not been created by me, which has been selected from somewhere. And I'm sharing this with you. It's because this the reason for doing this suddenly is uh, because I did it intentionally uh, as uh, tomorrow you are going to have your exam of CA2 and uh, you are actually a bit uh, worried about that examination, but you shouldn't worry. But, but being a student, you, you are worrying. Anyways, so my today's lecture will not be uh, stretched uh, to, uh, I, and I shall try not to put you into trouble with new, with uh, such kind of things or uh, uh, typical mathematics so that you uh, become your your brain becomes tired so that's why i have selecting something which i'm uh, something from the book uh, a topic which from from the book which is uh, i'm i'm coming to that topic but uh, i'm i'm going to give you the intro to this hypothesis testing uh, in today's class and we, we shall not be doing any mathematics today okay that is the first thing i must share with you so after attending the class, if you forget, you know, don't have to worry. Then again, you can revise and recapitulate things. Okay. And uh, uh, after tomorrow's class, uh, then the officially the holiday for Kali Puja, Diwali and uh, Chat Puja has not been declared yet, although we know the dates. But uh, if there is official notice, notification from the college, and then we have to abide by the uh, uh, instruction uh, given uh, by the principal and then we shall again be meeting after chat puja but if there are no such notifications because i think that every day today nowadays every day is a holiday so i i cannot keep track of sundays and saturdays okay so this is happening with all of us not only with me so therefore, if there is no notification, I shall be taking class. Otherwise, we shall be meeting after Chat Puja, after tomorrow's examination. Tomorrow's examination will be held at 12 p.m. in your scheduled class hour through Google form as, as we discussed. And the syllabus and everything has been already been mentioned. So you just uh, prepare yourself for that. Don't have to worry about marks. You just give the examination. Hypothesis testing. Uh, this topic is a uh, topic of module five, but the name hypothesis testing was not written over there. Rather, the name of the topic which was given in the syllabus was uh, test of significance. As you, as you can see, if you have the syllabus in front of you, the topic is test of significance. But I have written hypothesis testing. Today, I'm going to discuss what is the definition of a test of significance with from the perspective of hypothesis testing. So you have to be uh, well aware of the fact that what do we mean by hypothesis at all? So hypothesis uh, literally means assumption. And statistically, we call it as hypothesis and testing means you are going to perform some sort of experiment, a statistical experiment on your hypothesis 
on your assumption to prove its validity or invalidity. Okay, and you can see in this particular topic, there are several other topics you see. Introduction is there, testing of statistical hypotheses, losses and risks, name and pairs and lemma, the power function of a test, likelihood ratio test, theory and practice, everything is there. But the way we shall deal with the topic, uh, the sequence which we will maintain, which I will maintain to teach this particular topic will be in my style and not in this book style. But we shall all, but even then we shall try to keep ourselves hooked to the book because this book which from which the topic has been selected is a book which i have already shared with you a long time ago it is the book of john fune's uh, probability and statistics it is shared in the google classroom those who have not downloaded the book yet you please download it and from there i have uh, split the pages and uh, merged it and i've made a six page note today for today's class actually so actually i have made the thing uh, a little bit concise for you so that you shouldn't follow any difficulties in reading and you get everything together at a time so what is hypothesis actually okay we have got the literal meaning of hypothesis now what do you mean by that let me put it in in in, in my style what is hypothesis now as you you see in in today's uh, newspaper there is a news uh, that uh, let me read the news for you. It is saying that the hi highlight of uh, this paper statement, the highlight of the news is India's coronavirus daily crosses 85 lakhs. This is the news. India's coronavirus daily crosses 85 lakhs. Now, this particular news uh, is based on a statistics. Okay, so, so they have got some sort of statistics, uh, statistics from the agency and the agency has declared this thing. I do not know, we do not know whether this notification in the news is politicized or not. Uh, so therefore, we don't know the validity or invalidity of this particular statement. So I am, I am getting this particular news in, 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 the, in the newspaper of statesmen, but if you, if you have uh, some other newspaper with you like Times of India and Telegraph and uh, uh, say uh, the Hindu, then I don't know what, what, what is written over there. Whether the, the, the digit 85 lakh as it is written, this digit is same there or not. I don't know. But we have to rely upon this particular information because it is published in the newspaper and Lemon will definitely do so. The person who doesn't know statistics will definitely rely on this particular topic. But we shouldn't because we do not know the source of this particular information. I do not know the source of this particular information from where did they got, get this particular data. We do not know the source. We do not know how the sampling has been done. We do not know how they have performed their statistical experiment. This 85 lakh, this particular information, 85 lakh, is it talking about population? It is 85 lakh population or it is a sample of some sort of population? We don't know that. So many information in this particular news is unclear. So if, if I, for the, for the time being, if I assume that 85 lakh is the average, average tally of the coronavirus patient, average tally of the coronavirus, coronavirus patient today, then this uh, 85 can be treated as average, average number of people. So, I can, in hypothesis testing, what we do, we consider this as the hypothesis. Our assumption that India crosses, actual statement should have been, as it is written over here, India's coronavirus daily crosses 85 lakh. We should write in the, write, put it in this way that we assume that India's coronavirus daily crosses 85 lakh. Now, we can put forward a question like this. What will be the probability or what will be the probability that this particular 85 lakh, this value average daily will increase or it will decrease in the coming, coming year? It is a question of probability. And if it's a matter of hypothesis testing, we can put a, hypo we can put a question to the authority or to us that whether we shall be able to lead a normal life whether we shall be able to go to the college, whether, whether we shall be able to meet our friends in the college, whether uh, Shobiksar will be, take, will be able to take physical class with AC second year students at all in this particular semester. It's all matter of 
experimentation. It's all a matter of uh, doing some sort of experiment on the basis of this hypothesis. Sometimes it is written in the newspaper that India crosses tally, uh, uh, India's coronavirus tally crosses 85 lakh. Sometimes it is called, it is said that the recovery rate is uh, uh, high. Sometimes it is written that the, the in, 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 in some days ago, I got in the statesman newspaper in the front page, it was written that uh, India's recovery rate is higher than the recovery rate of other countries because of the measures taken by the uh, Prime Minister of India. But in the third page, which is the page of uh, local news, it was written that uh, be prepared. Obhijit Banerjee, the Nobel laureate, has said that uh, West Bengal is getting prepared for a second wave of coronavirus attack. Now, what to believe? Should we believe the front page? Should we believe the third page? What to believe? We, the common men, what should we believe? Whom should we believe? Should we believe the center or should we believe the state? Election days are coming everywhere. Bihar is going to go going through the election in on West Bengal. In West Bengal, there will be election on uh, May. Is this particular item politicized or is this, it is valid? It is all matter of testing. It is all matter of uh, presumption. It, we, we have to test. We have to test the hypothesis. Whatever it is written in the newspaper, we have to test it. So this is all about hypothesis testing and we do in a statistical manner. Okay. But you know that why do we uh, select our, we, why do we test the hypothesis on where we apply our hypothesis testing? Do we apply this hypothesis testing on the population? Answer is no. We do not apply the hypothesis testing to the population. We apply it on the sample always because population survey is not possible. Now students, uh, we have gone through the uh, National Board of Accreditation Principle uh, process in this, uh, this year. Okay, unfortunately, for some reason or other, I'm very, very much disheartened that EC has not got it. But we hope for the best and in the coming next two years, they will rectify this defect and the EC is going to get the NB accreditation very soon. But the question is, the, uh, the thing which we have learned over uh, from this particular uh, uh, process of NB accreditation, we have come to know that uh, we have to be very much careful about why, what we learn. And when we learn a particular subject, then we have to be, we have to be very well aware of the fact that after learning the subject, what we shall be able to do. Now, this topic of hypothesis testing is a topic which is the ultimate goal of your statistical analysis. What we, we have started learning everything from the scratch, starting from the conditional probability, Bayes theorem, uh, uh, the study of the distributions, et cetera, et cetera, everything we have learned. Why? To reach up to this particular point. Hypothesis testing. This is the ultimate goal. This is the course outcome of BSM 301. So we have to be very careful while studying it. Hypothesis testing is our course goal. During the NBA process, I have come to know of another fact that every syllabus has its own gap. I used to teach, and that time I used to teach some a topic of uh, topic known as operations research in CSE, uh, sixth semester, and I prepared the gap analysis over there. Here in this particular syllabus of BSM 301, there is indeed a gap, and that gap is estimation of parameter. Okay. This is a very important topic. If you have the book with you, the joint points book, you will see that there are two chapters which have been left out of the syllabus. Estimation of parameter, one estimation is called the point estimation, another estimation is called the interval estimation. But that has not been touched. I don't know, unfortunately that has not been touched. So this is the course gap. Being a student of ECE second year and studying BSN 301, you must know what is the course gap. What are the course gaps of your syllabus? of a particular syllabus. Okay, so this is the course gap. But since this is the course gap and this is not there in the syllabus, so unfortunately I'm not officially able to take the class of that, but I shall try to make a video of that point estimation, interval estimation if I get time later on and, to, and I shall try to upload it in the YouTube so that you can go through that to, men, to make up the course gap. In point estimation and interval estimation, it is written very briefly. I'm saying it is written that since population survey is not possible, 
okay population is designed by two things important thing which is called parameter parameter of the say for example we learned about parameter of binomial distribution we learn about parameter of Poisson distribution we learned about parameter of normal distribution so what is parameter parameter defines the distribution if you know the parameter we know that it is binomial distribution if we know the relevant parameter we know that it is Poisson if you know the relevant parameter we know it's geometric what is the parameter of population every population follow a distribution it's basic principle that it's it follows a distribution what kind of distribution we don't know india's coronavirus uh, tally crosses 85 lakhs it follows a distribution i don't know what sort of distribution but if we come to know of the parameter of this particular population then the distribution will be known because parameter gives you the idea of distribution so pop, any measurement what is parameter parameter means any measurement related to population say for for example population mean is the parameter population variance is the parameter population standard deviation is the parameter population mean deviation is the parameter any measurement of uh, any measurement is related to population is called the parameter but any measurement related to sample is called the statistic S T A T I S T I C statistic and this 85 lakh India's coronavirus tally crosses 85 lakh this value 85 like I'm doing I 85 lakh I don't know whether they are talking about statistic or parameter whether it is a population measurement or a sample measurement I don't know this answer is not cleared from this particular headline so in part in hypothesis testing we select the sample and on on the basis of the sample statistic on the basis of the sample statistics we give our uh, our judgment on the population from which the sample has been chosen let me cite another example i took the ca exam ca1 examination of the ec students where i found that the the marks uh, told me that uh, the the marks obtained by ec ec Section A students was much high average mark obtained by the ECA student was higher than the average mark obtained by the ECB student. I am taking CA2 examination tomorrow. Can I expect that their average mark will remain same or uh, the ECB marks will get will become higher than the ECA marks? This is also a matter of testing another kind of thing. What is the difference between these two examples? What is the difference between these two examples? India's coronavirus tally crosses 85 lakh. That means if I, if I, for the time being, if I, if I assume that this is population measurement, then they, they are talking about a specific value of the population, 85. But in the second, so I have to, I have to test it. Okay, so it is called a point estimation where I test the population value on the basis of the sample statistic. Second is called the interval. Second is a different kind of measurement where we say that something is greater than something or something is lesser than something or there is no such difference between the two values this is another kind of measurement okay so there are various uh, different kinds of statistics and statistical hypothesis which we perform on the system so it is written over here that uh, i have highlighted this particular thing they have they have cited one example you see if an engineer has to decide on the basis of a sample data, whether the true average lifetime of a certain kind of tires is at least 42,000 miles. If an agronomist has to decide on the basis of the experiments where one, whether one kind of fertilizer produces a higher yield of soybeans than other. And if a manufacturer of pharmaceutical products has to decide on the basis of samples, whether it's a 90% of all patients given a new medication will recover from a certain disease. These problems can all be translated into the language of statistical tests of hypothesis. So I shall ask all the students, please go through. If you are read, if you read any chapter, go, go through the chapter line by line and do not miss any line. This is the only you can learn the language. You can learn the language of mathematics. Okay. Now, the statistical hypothesis a proper definition has been written he over here. What is statistical hypothesis? An assertion. Carefully, carefully read this particular line. An assertion or conjecture. Conjecture means something which has not yet been proved. India's coronavirus tally crosses 85 lakhs. It is not a theorem. 
it is a conjecture your assumption your assertion an assertion or conjecture about the distribution of one or more random variable is called a statistical hypothesis if a statistical hypothesis completely specifies the distribution it is called simple hypothesis if not it is referred to as composite hypothesis so this is the definition of statistical hypothesis and its two parts one is called simple hypothesis and another is called composite hypothesis okay so it is written a simple hypothesis must therefore specify not only the functional form of the underlying distribution but also the values of all parameters thus in the third of the above examples the one dealing with the effectiveness of the new medication the hypothesis theta is 0.9 is simple of course that we specify the sample size and that the population is binomial however in the first of the preceding examples the hypothesis is composite that is theta is greater than or equal to 42000 doesn't assign a specific value to the parameter theta so when we say that the india's tally crosses 45 85 lakhs theta is getting the definite value theta is it's, it's this hypothesis is called simple hypothesis but if i put this particular assertion in this way it, it seems that india's coronavirus tally is uh, above 85 lakhs okay if i don't say crosses 85 lakhs means it is the it, it, they are talking about composite hypothesis but if i say that india's coronavirus tally is exactly 85 lakhs it is called simple hypothesis so in this particular news i mean uh, statesman today they are talking about composite hypothesis and not simple hypothesis because it is not exactly equal to 85 lakh it is greater than that okay so this is the difference between simple hypothesis and composite hypothesis to be able to construct suitable criteria to be able to construct a suitable criteria for testing statistical hypothesis it is necessary that we all formulate alternative hypothesis now what do we what do we mean by alternative hypothesis let me put forward in my way in my style alternative hypothesis is something like uh, which is the uh, opposite of say in a particular uh, when we say that there is a good boy the automatically we there comes the opposite that there is a bad boy also so if the good and boy bad these two things they they they, they move accord, together because if there is no notion of bad then there is no notion of good if there is no notion of black then there is there will not there is no notion about white so everything every word this kind every such word has its antonym just like that if you assume something to be true that it is your hypothesis then the opposite of that opposite of your assumption is called the alternative hypothesis so if you say that india's coronavirus tally crosses 85 lakh your hypothesis then india's coronavirus tally doesn't cross 85 lakh is your alternative hypothesis so that has been written over here in this particular paragraph with respect to the examples given in the previous previous page i hope that all of you will read them line by line reading is a very good habit remember this what is null hypothesis so you see null hypothesis is called the hypothesis of no difference is called a null hypothesis and sometimes it is known as basic hypothesis so null hypothesis suppose i mean i say that uh, i say that in ca2 examination there will be no difference between the marks obtained by the students of uh, eca and the students of ecb there will be no difference between the average marks obtained by eca b students and ecb student that that type of statement is called the hypothesis uh, of uh, no difference and it is called null hypothesis okay so null hypothesis in when it was particularly deduced in in its primitive stage uh, it was termed as hypothesis of no difference but nowadays it has become its wide uh, range of uh, uh, possibilities and nowadays we also say that if we if you say uh, that uh, a part of the average mark of vc if i put this in this way the average mark of vc students in uh, particular examination will be exactly uh, 60 then it is a specific value it is a simple hypothesis this can also be treated as a null hypothesis because null hypothesis uh, jurisdiction has increased nowadays 
but actually primitively null hypothesis was known as the hypothesis of no difference and alternative hypothesis is its antagonist if null hypothesis is the protagonist and alternative hypothesis is the antagonist but uh, since uh, protagonists are liked and antagonists antagonists are hated here the thing is not like that here sometimes antagonists are also liked and protagonist is hated okay so i am just using this these words to let you know that one thing is the opposite of other okay so null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis are too important the most important thing in statistical hypothesis in null hypothesis the symbol which we use is called is given by h0 zero but and in alternative hypothesis we use the symbol h1 or h a a stands for alternative hypothesis but you can put you can ask me this question you can always ask questions to yourself or to me or to anybody or you can discuss among your friends or you can go to the history of mathematics or history of statistics to get to know the source of this kind of things which has come out earlier why didn't they say that null hypothesis symbol is h0 or hn say n stands for null okay but here they have seen, said h1 or ha why not hn because when null hypothesis was actually the 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 the, the uh, idea of null hypothesis was actually developed they didn't think of any other notation than h0 zero and one was the classic but why what is that these are bits and we always try to put things in terms of bits in when i'm i'm doing this entire thing which i'm now in and you are in also in terms of bits okay everything i speak and you are going to listen my 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 voice my words my sentences are being transformed in to bits and then in the receiver this is the bits are again being getting divided back to the voice and the everything so everything is based upon zero and one so therefore since null and alternative hypothesis are antagonist protagonists and antagonists so they put one bit for null and another bit for alternative so they put zero for null and one for alternative later when uh, some other people uh, they actually defined uh, things uh, they generalized the ideas they used several other notations but they changed a h a for h1 but h0 they kept it fixed okay so you cannot write hn for null hypothesis always you have to write h0 and it is universally accepted acceptable h1 is universally acceptable i am doing this i am taking lots of time in in uh, uh, putting the ideas in front of you today because i need my today's class to be to be theoretical and not mathematical because as i told you i don't want to make put you into trouble just before the examination day so it's a story time i'm just telling you the story just keep on listening be present and after the class you move out okay now what is uh, testing a statistical hypothesis testing a statistical hypothesis means you are going to test a kind of statistic say let me read this particular paragraph for you the test, test testing of a statistical hypothesis is the application of an explicit set of rules for deciding on the basis of a random sample whether to accept the null hypothesis or to reject it in favor of the alternative hypothesis so that's why we do that's why we do the null hypothesis testing we test the null hypothesis suppose for example that a statistician wants to test the null hypothesis theta is theta not what is theta you 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 may be in a uh, confusion by seeing this kind of notation what is theta theta may be say it's the average mark of the students in a competitive examination that is theta and what is theta not theta not is the value of that theta specific value of that theta so if a statistician wants to test that the null hypothesis that the average mark of the students in a competitive examination theta is theta not against the alternative hypothesis that it is not theta not it is theta 1 in order to make a choice he will generate a sample data by conducting an experiment and then compute the value of the test statistic why test statistic as i told the statistic is the sample measurement see is this theta and this theta not this theta and theta not is population measurement he is talking about the population so theta is a parameter theta not is the value of the parameter theta is a parameter theta 1 is a value of the parameter but he cannot uh, 
study the population because it is impossible to do so because we do not have such kind of money and time and manpower. Okay, so he selected a sample say from Techno India, from Heritage, from IEM, and from other parts of India. If he wants to increase its sample size, then he will do so. Then he is calculating their average marks in that specific competitive examination. Their average mark will not be parameter, that will be statistic, and he is going to test it. So, therefore, it is called test statistic. Okay which will tell him what action to take for each possible outcome of the sample space. The test procedure therefore partitions the possible values of the test, uh, test statistic into two subsets, acceptance, acceptance region or for H0 and rejection region for H0. Acceptance region for H0 and rejection region for H0. So actually what we do, we consider a normal curve like this. We consider a normal curve like this because you know, once I told you from the central limit theorem that every data tends to follow normal distribution if the data size increases. Okay, so if you consider my drawing is very bad, I cannot uh, draw using mouse. So my I'm using actually my finger. So if it is a normal curve, if it looks like a normal curve, then I shall set a region like this. Okay, this is my region. And I will say that if your test testing says that your null hypothesis falls inside this region, inside this value, say so this value is minus Z and this value is plus Z, if I say so, then with this region will be called the acceptance region. But if your test statistic value falls here or here, outside this uh, bounded region, then we will say that that region will be called the rejection region. That region will be called the rejection region. So. In hypothesis testing, we always consider the acceptance region and rejection region. Okay. And here is the important thing. I must show it in terms of tables. When we do so, we are always, when we do any kind of measurement, engineering measurements, you have done measurements in labs, you have done in, in physics class, in chemistry, in engineering also, you are doing lots of things in the laboratory classroom. So when we do measurement, we are always prone, prone to errors. So what sort of errors can creep in if we do a statistical measurement of hypothesis testing? The error will be, there are two kind, two, two errors. One is called the type one error, another is called the type two error. Type one error, what is type one error? So you see the, you look into the, look, look at the table carefully. You have asserted something about the system. So H naught is true, okay? And H not about H not is null hypothesis. So your there are two possibilities. One possibility is your H not can be true or your H not can be false. So you have two possibilities here in the column. And there are other two possibilities for with respect to H not. One is called that you can accept your H not or you can reject your H not. Okay. Now if I put this in terms of matrix, what is actually happening? It may so happen that during the uh, during the examination uh, during the uh, experimentation, you can say that your H not was indeed true, and you have accepted it. Okay, this is a this is quite acceptable, but it 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 doesn't happen at all. Your H not was actually true, and you accepted H not. It is means you have performed no error at all. Your H not was actually false and you have rejected H not, there is no error. But these systems, this particular diagonal is actually an ideal case. It doesn't happen at all. Mostly what happens is that your H not is false and you are accepting it. H not was not true. Your null hypothesis was not true. Your assumption was not true. But you are, during the experiment, you have got some sort of result that you are accept, you are going to accept this H naught, then you are actually performing an error with some probability. That error is called type two error. And its probability is called the size, size of the error. So the rejection region, which I previously drawn is sometimes also called the, uh, the, the uh, critical region. Okay, critical region and rejection region are synonymous. So if you are performing this error, that means your null hypothesis is false, then you are actually calculating by probability, you are actually calculating the size of the critical region. Okay, 
another issue is that your H naught is true. Your assumption was true. Your assertion was true. But during the process, you have got some sort of result that you are rejecting your H naught. Then you are also trying to, you have, you have also kind of performed a, an, an, an error, which is called type one error with some probability alpha. And that probability will be called level of significance of the test. So level of significance is associated with type one error, the probability of type one error. I shall mathematically show you everything once I take the class properly after the vacation. Okay, but today I'm not going to put you into trouble as I told you. So I'm just uh, putting in terms of stories. So level of significance is a kind of probability which is pro associated with the type one error and size of the critical region is another kind of probability which is associated with the type two error. We always want to reduce the size of the type one error and type two error because you want to reduce, reduce the size of the error. Okay. That can only be done. As I said that a good test procedure is one in which both alpha and beta are small. And the only way in which we can reduce the probabilities of both types of error is to increase the size of the sample. So you have to increase your sample size to some value so that these errors are actually reduced. And then that can also be what should be your ideal sample size that can also be calculated properly by statistical analysis. We shall be discussing everything mathematics of everything after the vacation. Okay, so best of luck for tomorrow's examination. Time has already almost ran out. Uh, we shall meet tomorrow. I shall put the uh, question paper in the Google form and best of luck once again. I hope that you will perform this time in a better way. Okay, so bye for now. Uh, see you soon.